that you need to start a revolution is some bread and someone to break it with. Greenbelt asked me to talk a bit about how to start a revolution, and I'm by no means an expert, and I certainly have never started a revolution. But I'm pretty convinced that the best revolution was started by a man that came eating and drinking. Whenever Jesus sat down to have food, something amazing always happened. It was always about more than just the food. He had meals that fed the hungry, meals that healed the sick, meals that he had with the marginalized and the rejected. And again and again, we encounter these stories about sharing food. The radical revolution of love that Jesus brought was deeply rooted in sharing meals together, in sitting down at a table where everyone's equal and sharing in the same bread. Today, we live in a world that is, well, it's pretty broken, and it's a world where we've lost our sense of community, a sense of connectedness to the earth and to the people that are in it. And we are in desperate need, I think, of a revolution that brings a radical shift in the way that we see community. I work for Christian Aid's youth movement, we're called The Collective, and we've got a vision for how to start hundreds of small revolutions that perhaps might just change the world. It's a vision that's inspired by the early church, because the early church was in the business of, revolu of revolutions. In Acts, we read that immediately after Pentecost, after God poured out his Holy Spirit on people, the immediate response was to go and share everything they had. And we read there were no more needy people. The early church ended poverty in their community, and they ended it because they shared everything they had with each other, and they understood the importance of connectedness and community. They might have ended poverty in their local community, not necessarily in the world, but today we live in a global community. Our lives are more connected to the people that make our clothes, that grow our food, than often to the people who live down our road. And yet the way that we're living in community is broken. And I think we need to take some lessons from the early church because we have no choice in this revolution but to make sure that we don't stop until there are still no more needy people in our global community. So there's three things that the collective, we think this looks like. One is the radical practice of generosity. There's a saying in the early church that if you've got two, two coats, then you've stolen one from someone who doesn't have any. They understood that the importance of sharing and redistributing wealth with everyone in their community. But what does that look like today to practice a radical generosity? The second is to have a prophetic vision that challenges the norm, an apocalyptic challenge, perhaps not in the world-ending way, but in the true sense of the world of apocalyptic an unveiling of the present that produces an alternative reality, an alternative vision for the future. And the early church lived this out. They challenged the norm of the Roman Empire. And thirdly, we need to remember that it started small. The early church started small and it grew slowly. So we need to start some small, slowly growing revolutions that have a prophetic vision for re-understanding how we live in community. And I think it all just starts with sitting down and sharing a meal together, sharing some food. Because what if we all started having meals that were more like Jesus? Meals that were more than just about the food. What if once a month you got together with some friends and shared some food and built local community, but at the same time did something about justice, did something to build your global community? Sharing a meal with your friends and at the same time writing a letter to your MP, or breaking bread with your church and taking part in a campaign action that challenges structures, dishing up dinner to your family while you sit down and challenge your lifestyles and reimagine how we're impacting people around the world. The world tells us that all that matters is your need, your wants, your desires, but actually when we're connected, when we recognize how we're bound up in each other, everyone's problem becomes our problem. So it's quite simple, really. Um, this is my challenge, our, our challenge at Christian Aid to you. Why don't you don't need to wait for a big revolution? Why don't you once a month find some friends, sit down, share some food, and ask how are we connected in community, and what does that look like for my life? And perhaps 
If we all start doing that more, we might just do something amazing. Perhaps we might together just end poverty and make sure there are no more needy people in our community.